Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and also welcome to those of you joining from Forbes as well and uh, today I'm excited to reveal for the first time the performance numbers of the Ryzen 5000 series. So that's the Zen 3 architecture based Ryzen 9 5900X and Ryzen 7 5800X which have been sampled to reviewers like myself over the, over the last week or so. And um, the CPUs, the top end 5900X, of course, has 12 cores and 24 threads, essentially the replacement for the Ryzen uh, 9 3900X, I think I got that right, and also the 5800X, 8 cores and 16 threads, the replacement for the 3800X, albeit the older CPUs will continue to, uh, to be sold for the time being. So what have we actually got in the box? Well, we've got the CPUs, but in these two boxes, you do not get a cooler. So if you have or decide to purchase the 5800X, 5900X or 5950X, you will not get a cooler in the box. The only one that includes a cooler is the 5600X, Ryzen 5, of course, and uh, that I don't have a sample of today because AMD hasn't actually sampled that one or the flagship 16 core yet just these two today. So if you do buy the 5800X or above, you will need a processor cooler. Now, some quick word on compatibility. As I'm sure most of you are aware, these new CPUs for the moment are only compatible with 500 series chipsets. So X570 and B550, of course, albeit with, probably with BIOS updates, depending on how new your board is. Um, Thankfully, most AMD motherboards can actually update the BIOS um, without a compatible CPU in the socket using some, some form of BIOS flashback. So check out your motherboard's instructions on how to do that. For X5, X470 and B450 motherboard owners, 400 series chipsets, your motherboards will, will be compatible, but not until next year. So we've been promised by AMD and motherboard manufacturers that we will get um, compatible BIOSes sometime in the new year, most likely in January. So fingers crossed that that is still the case. And um, we can look forward to yet another generation of uh, CPUs being compatible on those great motherboards. So today then, it's all about the performance numbers though. And I'd also like to introduce my test system, which is uh, basically, I've called it Wonder. I had a, uh, a naming uh, naming competition on my uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook pages. So do check those out. Crazy Tech Lab, and um, with Wanda, basically what we've got is my AMD test system at the moment. I can basically mount any motherboard to, to the test system, of course, but Wanda has been handling the AMD testing, whereas my green test system, identical to this down there, um, is called Cosmo, and um, he has been dealing with the Intel testing. So a quick roundup of the hardware that's on this test system then. We've got the brand new RTX 3080 Founders Edition graphics card, and um, basically keeping the two uh, test systems as identical as I can. You've got 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB memory. I've got an MSI um, MEG uh, X570 Unify motherboard here. And um, also around the back, I've got um, two 240 millimeter radiators courtesy of Corsair's Hydro X water cooling, whole bunch of other Hydro X components on this, on this build, of course. And uh, that's basically to ensure that whether I'm testing a Ryzen 5 3600X or a 64 core Threadripper, this system um, will be able to cope with those CPUs and just keep everything the same basically. So no thermal throttling um, as far as my testing goes. So, and uh, finally then the actual test bench that I'm using here is the absolutely gorgeous Bar uh, Baratech Ropalema uh, water-cooled test bench. So it's basically one giant distribution plate and uh, just makes my life easier from a testing point of view. So without further ado then, we've gone through the, uh, the specifications of these CPUs. What we've got here then are CPUs that are comparing um, against the likes of the Intel Core i9-10900K, which is also in the benchmarks. And also popular CPU out there, which is Intel's Core i9-9900K, which has eight cores and uh, 16 threads, of course, very, very popular CPU for gaming. I've included that in the graphs as well, because it's kind of comparable uh, to some extent with the CPUs that, that we're looking at here. And um, what we want to know is, is it Intel or AMD coming out the back of all this testing? Um, has AMD done enough to finally usurp Intel in games? We already know it's awesome in content creation. So without further ado, let's take a look at those performance numbers. Okay, so first up then, we've got the multi-threaded Cinebench R20 test and absolutely stellar numbers here for AMD. 
Uh, the Ryzen 7 uh, 5800X down the bottom there, a huge amount faster, a th uh, nearly a thousand points faster uh, than, or a thousand points higher, should I say, than the Ryzen 7 3800X. That's a huge improvement from, uh, from a, uh, just across a single generation. And incredibly, the 5800X nearly matches the score of the 10 core 10900K. So that's two extra cores, and AMD is, is practically matching it. Um, moving up the, the table then, the Ryzen 9 5900X, 12 cores and 24 threads, not that far away from matching the Ryzen 9 3950X, which has 16 cores and 32 threads. Obviously miles faster, more than, uh, well, about 1,200 points hi uh, higher score than the Ryzen 9 30, 30, uh, 9900X, and in a different league to the 10900K as well. So huge gains here for AMD. Next up is the single threaded score and equally impressive, if not more so here, um, not particularly representative of, of real world performance because even background tasks can hinder the, uh, the single core boost, but scores of 641 and 627 for the new Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 7, those are absolutely huge numbers. Um, if you look at even compared to previous generation AMD CPUs, you're looking at 100 point gains there and even more than that compared to the 10900K. So clearly an indicator that lightly threaded performance maybe then is going to be, signif is going to be significant with these CPUs. Um, so anything that uses single threads, obviously massive gains, but as I said before, the, the single threaded score should be taken with a pinch of salt because there are so many things that can affect uh, the uh, the single uh, the single core boosting in uh, real world in in the real world. So next is handbrake, and once again some massive gains for AMD here. The Ryzen 7 5800X miles faster than the Ryzen 7 3800X, and uh, once again not that far away from matching the 10900K. Um, just a, another sort of seven or eight uh, seven or eight seconds. Um, and it would have actually matched it, so you're you're getting less than 10% performance uh, boost for the uh, over the Ryzen 75800X there with the Intel CPU. And um, sitting at the top of the stack then is the Ryzen 9 5900X. Is actually faster than the Ryzen 9 3950X despite a uh, four-core, eight-thread deficit, but that's because handbrake doesn't generally scale that well above eight to ten cores. So all those, uh, the 16 cores aren't really being, being fully utilized, but even so, look at the difference compared to the Ryzen 9 3800X, a massive performance difference there, similar to what we saw in Cinebench as well. So um, video encoding, an absolutely massive win for AMD here. So the next test is the GIMP-based PCMark uh, 10 image editing test. So I've actually enabled uh, various acceleration techniques in this uh, in this test now to uh, make it more representative. So there's maybe not quite as much difference as we would have seen before. Uh, the Ryzen 9 5900X though, way out in front despite this being a multi-threaded test. And uh, Ryzen 7 5800X, um, noti noticeably faster than the Ryzen 9 3900X. Um, but really there's not that much difference here given that there's a, a modicum of um, a various uh, a GPU acceleration and the like going on. Even so, the Core i9-10900K languishing uh, well down uh, in the uh, bottom from last place and the Core i9-9900K sitting in last place as well. Another test that's changed since I uh, last did some benchmarking is Adobe Premiere Pro, namely thanks to the fact that the uh, application is now GPU accelerated when you're exporting files, which is what my benchmark deals with basically, because in the past it's taken an absolute age to deal with 4K content. That's not the case now. The uh, RTX 3090 was basically ripping along at 100% load when I exported these videos, so much more of a load on the GPU now than the CPU, which is essentially a good thing because it means you can export your videos a heck of a lot quicker than you could in the past. So today we've got the Ryzen 9 5900X performing pretty much on par with um, the other Ryzen 9 CPUs. The Core i9-10900K does slip quite a bit. Um, at stock speed it's uh, about 5% slower in Adobe Premiere Pro exporting these videos and then generally the uh, lower core CPUs, the two 8 core CPUs are down there at the bottom. So generally scaling 
with cores and threads here um, and less of a dependency on the CPU. However, it will be interesting to see how the six core CPUs such as the 10600K and uh, Ryzen 5 5600X perform in this test as well. Our first game test and uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood Oh my goodness, it's an absolutely uh, massive win for AMD here. It's uh, at stock speed. The uh, Ryzen 9 5800X is faster than the Core i9 10900K, significantly so on the minimum 99th percentile average frame rate, significantly quicker on the minimum 99th percentile as well. And uh, Ryzen 9 5900X, um, not actually that much, not actually as fast as the Ryzen 7 37, uh, 3800X in my benchmark, potentially due to the fact that that Ryzen 7 5800X can, can basically boost all its cores up to 4.5 gigahertz. So if you're scaling up to, but no further than eight cores maybe, um, that's potentially one reason there. Um, so the Ryzen, the Ryzen 7 5800X, an absolute beast. Uh, for for uh, for desktop gaming and um, looking further down the stack, obviously massive gains in this game compared to Zen 2 CPUs. So even one of the faster ones, such as the Ryzen 9 3950X, which usually sat up, sat near the top of the pack of AMD's game performance testing, um, it's well down there with a minimum 99th percentile of 175 frames per second versus two, um, where are we, 204 frames per second with the Ryzen 7 5800X. So it's huge gains for AMD in gaming in this game. And uh, also you would probably pick, well, almost certainly pick AMD um, over Intel as well, which is huge news. Okay, so next up then is Far Cry New Dawn. And Far Cry has traditionally been one of these games that just stubbornly refuses to um, hand it over to AMD. It's always been Intel that's that sat at the top of the graphs. Intel is still at the top of the graphs, but not in every single way. So we've got the Ryzen 9 5900X with a minimum 99th percentile of 106 frames per second. Now that's just three frames per second off the Core i9 10900K, and the average 99th percent, uh, the average 99th percentile frame rate is actually slightly higher. You've got 161 frames per second versus 159. So basically, AMD on par here, and uh, the only way you get significantly more frames is if you overclock either the Core i9 9900K or 10900K. But even then, the average frame rates still don't better. AMD. In fact, the 9900K actually has a slower average uh, average frame rate. So what we're looking at here is AMD either being on par or slightly faster than Intel's 8 and 10 core CPUs, which is huge news. And again, looking down, further down the stack, uh, obviously AMD's Zen 2 CPUs here, uh, basically proving my point earlier that they just, they just struggled in this game against Intel. And uh, what we have are some massive gains for AMD here. Um, like Ryzen 9 3900X, for example, a minimum of 91 frames per second. That has risen up to 106 frames per second now for the 5900X, which is a huge boost in games. So our final game test then is Metro Exodus and the Ryzen 9 5900X. Once again, massive gains over the previous generation CPUs. So the Ryzen 9 uh, 3900X sitting down there at around 50 frames per second minimum, 89 frames per second average. For some reason, um, that CPU didn't seem to perform uh, as fast as the others. And um, But still, even compared to the rest of the, uh, the AMD range, the Ryzen 9 5900X with a minimum 99th percentile of 57 frames per second, miles faster than any other Zen 2 CPU. And... Um, also, very competitive against Intel. You're looking at just two frames per second uh, down on the minimum, which is almost within the margin of error, I'd say here. And again, just two frames slower than the 10900K on the average 99th percentile as well. So pretty much level pegging here, um, AMD and Intel. And um, should be noted that the Ryzen 9, uh, sorry, the Core i9 9900K, a couple of frames per second again, faster, but uh, pretty much the same difference on the average frame rate. So Intel, as I say, level pegging in Metro Exodus, not quite the uh, the dominant performance that we saw from the, uh, the, in the other games such as Far Cry and uh, Wolfenstein, but again, massive gains over the previous generation and level pegging with Intel. So you pretty much wouldn't choose one 
one or the other in terms of AMD or Intel for this game, they pretty much perform identically. The final test then is power consumption, and AMD is pretty true to its word in that the Ryzen 5000 series um, has uh, identical TDPs to, their, to its predecessors, and uh, that that's pretty much seems to be the case. So you've got the Ryzen 7 5800X drawing uh, 237 watts at stock speed uh, from the system as a whole, and that's pretty much identical to the 3800X. And uh, again, maybe sort of 12, uh, 12 uh, or 15 watts difference uh, or thereabouts between the uh, 5900X and 3900X. 293 watts versus 308 watts, so um, a little more uh, power consumption there, but again, this can just be down to finicky bits with the uh, with the system doing something at the, at the time. So a um, tiny bit more power draw there, but overall, Ryzen 7 5800X, um, the power efficiency uh, given the performance is absolutely stellar. So seeing as it beats the Core i9 uh, 10900K um, in a lot of tests um, or comes very close to matching it um, in games and content creation, the fact that CPU draws 100 extra watts um, is, is pretty impressive from AMD's part. Ryzen 9 5900X then 293 watts, again uh, nearly 40 watts more power efficient than the Core i9 10900K. Um, and a lot faster in uh, content creation and matching it or bettering it in games as well. So what do we make of the Ryzen 5000 series then? Well, I think it's fair to say that, both these, with, that with both these CPUs, AMD has absolutely knocked it out of the park. They're now on par, if not faster than Intel in games, even when Intel's 10900K is massively overclocked. In most instances, it offers no significant benefit and in some areas, especially the average 99th percentile, it's still slower than the 5800X and 5900X. So AMD has finally done it. There is now no reason, as far as I can see, at least in the titles that I've tested, to opt for Intel over AMD. And we're talking about a, an RTX 3080 at 1080p here, right? So if there was any any CPU bottlenecking going on with AMD, it would have re revealed itself in these be in these benchmarks, and it didn't. So if you're going to be using a lesser powerful graphics card, or you're increasing the resolution and seeing lower frame rates than what I've got here, then the difference then the differences will be um, basically indistinguishable. So for now. What that means is that you do not need to pick between Intel and AMD in games. Intel just doesn't have an advantage here anymore, uh, and it's kind of been on the cards for a while. We knew that this was going to be on, uh, that this was going to happen because Zen 2 was already nearly on par with Intel in game in um, even the games where Intel had a stronghold. Um, now, the only difference you need to work out really is which CPU you go for. Do you go for the Ryzen 7 5800X or the 5900X? Well, as we've seen in my benchmarks, the 5900X doesn't really offer any extra performance in games. Um, in fact, it's pretty much on par, and the Ryzen 7 5800X does have an advantage that it can boost to higher all-core frequencies, so it may even have an advantage in some titles given that extra frequency. So it really boils down to the fact of whether you need that extra performance of the Ryzen 9 5900X in content creation. Both CPUs are absolutely monstrous here. The 5800X is already knocking on the door in, of uh, the 10900K in some benchmarks and even betters it in some, which is in incredible considering it costs a lot less. So if you need that extra uh, content creation grunt, then I would go for the Ryzen 9 uh, 5900X. If you don't or you can't quite stretch uh, that far, then it's um, it's no surprise that they, I'll be recommending the 57, the 5800X, the Ryzen 7, because it's still a monster for content creation and it's pretty much as fast as the 5900X in games as well. So well done AMD, it has finally done it with Zen 3 and of course we do have something from Intel that we'll be waiting for in the new year. It is claiming some fairly sizable IPC gains. In the meantime though, we've also got the Ryzen 5 5600X and uh, Ryzen 9 uh, 5950X, the 16 core flagship to look forward to. I will be reviewing those soon. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and turn on those notifications so you're notified when I get those reviews up. And uh, don't forget to check out my other videos as well. So thanks for listening. Well done AMD and I'll, I'll catch you soon.